What's up everyone, Terra Quake here, and welcome on back to our Pokemon Heart Gold walkthrough. In the last episode, we defeated Misty, the fifth gym leader here in the post game. And now that we have solved the issue at the power plant, we're basically done here around Cerulean City and all the surrounding routes. So it's time to make our way back to Lavender Town so we can get that EXPN card, which will give us access to the Poke Gear. Or sorry, Poke Flu on our Poke Gear, which can wake up the Snorlax in front of Diglett's Cave, and that's what allows us to get to the west side of Kanto. However, um, we could go back the same way we came through Rock Tunnel and all that stuff, but I actually want to go south and kind of make a little loop. So, right here's Route 5. There's really not much happening on this route. It's kind of similar to the, um, what's it called, to the Kanto games. However, I think there's no more daycare, and you think we can make it through this grass? Yes! I'm going to just see what's in this house. I think there is an item you can pick up from one of the people in here. Ah, oh, yeah, here it is. A cleanse tag. I don't know. It's one of these weird old ladies saying there's like a ghost around us. I feel like in every Pokemon game, it's like a ghost that gives you, you know, or sorry, a weird old lady that gives you like the spell tag or something. So now that we have um, solved the power plant, you can see that the underground tunnel was opened back up. Really not much going on down there. I'm sure there's a bunch of hidden items. But I want to stop by Saffron City real quickly because there's a little side quest that we can do. And that is going to be in this house right here, the pink one that stands out. What you're going to want to do is head upstairs. And this is actually the copycat girl. So you're going to see she changes like right into you. And uh, it's kind of confusing like to tell who's talking, but I'm pretty sure it's all her. She's got a bunch of Poke Dolls, but she actually lost one of them. And she said that... The last time she had it was in the Pokemon Fan Club in Vermilion City. So that is where, uh, yeah, where, don't know why I said where, but that's where we are headed off to next. So yeah, let's quickly make this trip to, um, to what's it called? Vermilion City. And as a reward, she'll give you the, uh, pass or the magnet train pass, which will allow you to head back and forth between Saffron City and Goldenrod City. So just speak to this guy because the Poke Doll is right there on the table. He didn't realize that it belongs to a little girl, so he decides to give it to us so we can give it back to her. However, there's another benefit of doing this thing because as you come out of the Pokemon fan club, guess who it is? Steven Stone from the Hoenn region. And he's here to tell us that Latios and Latias are now roaming around the Kanto region. So because we're playing Heart Gold, it is Latias. If you're playing Soul Silver, it is Latios. And yeah, he's going to tell you that they are roaming around the Kanto region. So it is another roaming legendary Pokemon, the third one in this game. And you'll see Steven a little bit later on after we defeat Red. But yeah, now you can, you know, do the good old strat of running back and forth between routes, using Max Repels, and waiting to, uh, to see Latias or Latios. However, I've decided that I'm going to hold off on Latias and Suicune, who since we have now defeated Misty and stuff and got her out of the Cerulean Cape, and we already saw him back on whatever route it was. I think Route 14. Suicune is now up in the Cerulean Cape. But what I'm going to do is just get Latias and Suicune in the same video. Because that video is probably going to be really short. Even though I'm going after both the legendaries. But I'm just going to combine them into one episode. Since if I made them separate it was going to be really really short. Probably like 3 or 4 minutes. So anyways, here is Route 8, and right off the bat, we have like a biker gang to fight, just a row of three of them. Now, Route 8 is optional. Um, this is just going to take us back to Lavender Town, so we can get that Radio Tower or EXPN card. I don't know, I get confused with all this stuff. But, of course, you could always loop back around from Fuchsia City, or even Route 11. Well, actually, never mind, you don't have the EXPN card yet to move the Snorlax. But um, this is probably the quicker way to go, even though we've already been through Route 15, 14, 13, and 12. So let's go, baby. Now, this guy, Biker Dwayne, just has a full team of coughing. Yeah, I don't know why um, bikers, I mean, you know them. They love to use their freaking poison types for whatever reason. So I guess Espeon is just going to have a heyday here. But yeah, Route 8 is pretty short. Not too much happening on it. I don't think there's any new Pokemon for you to get or anything like that. And, ooh, almost level 53. Espeon is just really zooming up in levels, man. What can I say? All right, two more psychics. One for you and one for the last one. I'm just handing them out. Like, one for you, one for you, one psychic for you. Anyways, um, yeah. And there we go. Level 53 for Espeon. No new moves. And last up, you've got... 
the coughing. So um, just above us was another entrance to the underground tunnel. That one takes you to Route 7 by Celadon City. But again, I don't think there's too much happening in the underground tunnel in the post game. There may be some hidden items down there, but I'm pretty sure that's it. You can let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section. Maybe there's something I don't know about. Anyways, um, we've got a Flareon coming up next. So, Rubble, get out here. We will uh, we'll shake up the ground with Earthquake. And right below us, just taunting us, is the TM for Torment. Not that it's anything too good, but like we've got to get through all three of these bikers just to um, get that TM. Then again, you could just go around and down the ledges, but you know I'm going to fight all the trainers, man. You know I'm going to do it. So we will Earthquake the Flareon. Ah, oh, we get outsped. Watch this burn me, too. How much you want to bet? Ooh, okay. Uh, I never said a certain amount of money, so bet was... Or bet is off, you know? Never shook on it either. Anyways, Flareon's going to go down. I hate how Flareon always gets, like... You know, just made fun of her for being, like, the least popular or, like, weakest evolution. But I like it. You know, Flareon's cool. I vibe with Flareon. And now we've got more poison types coming up. Actually, you know what? Since you're uh, already level 53, Espeon, let's go out to for Alligator. Also, Espeon, I forgot, has the Amulet coin on it. So, like, in a lot of these battles, we've just been getting, like, double the money, which is sweet. And, yeah, these guys are apparently called, like, the Kanto Biker Federation. Who knows what they do, man? Like, I, they just sit here on Route 8 and do nothing, I swear. I don't really know what their purpose is. Are they supposed to, like, monitor people biking around the region? Because if they are, they're not doing a good job because I'm biking around everywhere. Even if there's spots where I'm not supposed to bike, I'm biking. Anyways, level 52 for Gatorade. We'll stay in. Hit this last coughing with another surf. And that should do the trick and then we can finally get tm 41 at torment not that that move is any good probably more useful for like competitive battling and this is episode three of five for my uh five episode bulk recording session it's currently like almost 10 30 i'm getting really tired um i got up like before nine today which sure isn't early for some people but on a saturday when usually i'm sleeping in it's kind of early okay it's kind of early so bear with me. We're going to try and power through those last two videos, though. Don't you even worry. I don't want to skip another video when I've already missed two in this series. And one sort of was my fault. I mean, you know, it was the one way back towards the beginning. What was it? Route 32 or something? I recorded the whole video, saved my game, and then realized I didn't record my audio. So that really sucked. And then the second one, I couldn't get the freaking cheat to work, which is just embarrassing if I'm going to be honest. So, yeah, um, those are the two reasons why, you know, the daily uploading streak has uh, hit a couple of hurdles in this series. Because before Pokemon HeartGold, we were doing great, man. We really were. Also, we're, like, somewhat getting close to the one-year anniversary of this channel. Like, what is it, June? It's early June, isn't it? Or, like, right at the end of May, I think, is when I started the channel. I'll have to take a look. But the fact that by, you know, end of May, we're going to be done with... How many walkthroughs? Six? What we've done, I always have to count them up. We've done blue, silver, ruby, uh, fire red, platinum, and yeah, heart gold. And then we're probably going to be working on like black and white by that time. So that's pretty impressive if I don't say so myself. Like it makes me feel really productive that for the most part, besides two of the 365 days, I will have been able to upload every single day, which is pretty awesome. And here's one of these weird young couples. Yeah, they're going to have, like, version-exclusive CDOT and LOTED. Oh, isn't that adorable? No, they're going to freaking die. If y'all actually want to be good battlers, maybe you could have had, like, a shift tree in Ludicolo, but no, y'all stink. All right, Intimidate's not going to matter for these freaking babies. Look at them. Look at them. All right, so we'll Aerial Ace the LOTED, Strength the CDOT. That should be it. Watch Aerial Ace, not one shot. We kind of had problems last episode in the gym with Jumpluff not being able to uh, finish off some Pokemon with Giga Drain, even though it's like super effective. Heck, it was quad effective on the Quagsire, and it still couldn't take it out. Ugh, it just needs a better grass type move, but I don't think it gets one by level up. So maybe I'll get Solar Beam, but then that's like a whole turn to charge it up. Unless I get Sunny Day, but then that's taking up two move slots. So I don't really know what I want to do. 
Anyways, let's throw, uh, yeah, Peppa to the front. Should it be the easiest for this next trainer who's going to have three Magnemites. Also, you can see that you will need Cut in order to access the grass here if you are really trying to catch anything on this route. And here we go, three Magnemites. They're just going to get Earthquake to death because, for some reason, they, uh, they do not have Levitate. I mean, they look like a Pokemon that would get Levitate. They could definitely use a Levitate, being quad weak to ground, but, you know, I'm not complaining. Instead, they're stuck with, like, Sturdy, which sucks until Generation 5. Alright, Magnemite number 2 is coming out. And after this guy, we only have one more trainer to go. Shouldn't be too challenging at all. So yeah, we'll knock you out, take down the third Magnemite, and then we'll be in Lavender Town. And, you know, I'm hoping they have a big old parade set up for us. Like, as soon as we enter, confetti better be going everywhere because we just saved the Kanto Radio Tower's business. If we didn't go get that machine part, then, you know, uh, there's no radio show from Kanto. And the Snorlax will never move out of the way. People would be divided in the Kanto region. So I'm expecting, like, a big celebration, a big wad of cash. But, again, it's Pokemon, and we're a 10-year-old Pokemon trainer. So probably not going to happen. Seems like it happens in the anime, though. I mean, freaking Ash seems like they're going to a parade every other video. <laughs> Anyways... Here we go, we've got a gentleman chilling here. He's just gonna have a Growlithe. Guess he never got access to a Firestone. Sucks to have a freaking... What is it? Level 45 Growlithe, I think. Yeah, look at that thing. Just pathetic. Absolutely pathetic, dude. What are we doing? Alright, so I don't think the Intimidate will matter. Earthquake is just that strong. If it was an Arcanine, it would matter a bit more. But no, not for this little puppers. Little puppers. Oh, I'm sorry I had to do it to ya. But you're just going to fall through the cracks of the ground and die. Dang, so dark. Hey, that's what Mammoth Swine does, you know? He shows no mercy. Look at those eyes, dude. He's ready for anything. Okay, so real quickly, here's an orange apricorn at the end of the route, or start of the route, if you came from Lavender Town. And in moment of truth, will there be a big celebration for us? No! Okay, so let's just go straight to the radio tower, and I'm pretty sure we got to talk to the person that was running around before. Yeah, this guy. He was panicking and stuff. So, as thanks for um, solving the power plant problem, he gives us the EXPN card, and that allows you to access all of the stations here in the Kanto region, including the Pokey Flute station, which is uh, what we will be using in tomorrow's episode. I don't think anyone else has anything for us here, by the way. But yeah, we will be putting that to use in tomorrow's video when we solve the problem of the Snorlax. So be on the lookout for that. For now, though, have a great rest of your day. And until then, deuces.